and uh, who wrote about uh, Melusine, the, the fairy of Poitou, and her son, Geoffrey the Grandon, one a wonderful character I, I love to paint. And uh, one of the things that intrigue me about bishops always is that a bishop is someone who puts on a costume, uh, like, a, like a general or, or like an admiral, uh, which says something about the person. A general, for example, he could say, I, I am a brave man. Now, the trouble is that beneath the costume there is always the man. And a man is brave one day, but not necessarily brave the next. We are not that consistent. And uh, that is really rather comic, I find. Another aspect of the bishops that interests me is that they seem to me to be a good emblem for our time, as one might say. Uh, after all, in the, the great uh, change that there's been in the relationship between men and women, uh, men have lost the, the role of pater familias. And uh, the bishop, of course, is, is the pater familias in, in, in all his splendour. Uh, and what's more, he's in a costume which resembles more the mother than the father, so there's a sort of sexual ambiguity, which uh, I think is interesting. Uh, of course, at the beginning I painted landscapes and portraits, as everybody does, and then one day in May 1985 I was uh, living here entirely alone and I was painting and I, out of the, uh, the paint I started to see bold men and I started to, to see them coming through the paint, as it were, and that, that, that picture up there, that is actually the first of my bold men. While I was painting, I heard a car and somebody had come to see me, and my immediate reaction was to hide the picture. Oh, I thought, that's interesting. I'm touching something there that I don't want to show anybody. Oh, I thought, that's the way to go. That's where I must stick the knife in. And so I continued to paint bald men. Uh, it's obvious in, that in the change that's, that's been between the relationship, uh, in the relationship between men and women, that uh, suddenly one sees men as being the more fragile of the two sexes. And uh, I decided to start to think about what masculinity is, what it, what it actually means to be a man, to be male. And I paint my figures bald because, in a way, that is the bald head is, a, is an image of, of masculinity. And uh, the curious thing about this is that while I was stuck away in the, the Marie Poitre, painting bald men and thinking nobody else had had the same idea, I discover years afterwards, because it was in, in 1985 that I was doing this, that at the same time, in America, there were other painters who had the same idea, as though there was something in the air. People ask what uh, painting trend I, I belong to, what current of painting I belong to. I don't think it's a question one should ask a painter. Uh, to begin with, I, I don't think we really know. We, we risked uh, to say something stupid. Uh, all I know is that uh, I've got one subject, uh, and only one subject really, which is man. Because it seems to me that there's nothing more interesting than man on, on, on this planet. And uh, I suppose underlying my painting, there are three themes. Death, 
sex and solitude. It seems to me, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that they underlie all my painting. I like doing series. Uh, there's one series I do which is which I call Entre Hommes, or Between Men. Um, there are a lot of bars, because bars seem to me a place where you see solitude very clearly. Uh, and I'm interested in the relationship that there is between men when they're without women. Women alone seem to be able to talk about things. Men have more difficulty. They're always unspoken things, silences, looks in a group of men, which have always interested me, the unstated. Uh, I've also done a series about women, because, but that was different, because my, my father was a pilot in the 1418 war in the Flying Corps, and uh, I found some photographs of him and his, the other officers with him, and their girlfriends, and they all had these big hats, which set me off. And so I started doing this series, which I call Father's Pals. And uh, they can be having tea, sitting in the jungle. Or, uh, he, had a, he had a very bad plane crash. He was unconscious for ten days, was in a coma. And so I used that as a, as a theme, as a, as a story. Because uh, I suppose I like telling stories. After all, I'm an English painter, and, and I suppose English painting, as everybody knows, really started fairly late in the 18th century with William Hogarth. And Hogarth always worked in, in series, told stories, and, and he, um, he had a, a moral point of view on things. And I, I suppose that's always remained typical of English painting, and um, I suppose I'm associated with that. People are sometimes surprised that I gave up the theatre to to paint. But to me, it seems to be all exactly the same thing. The difference is that if I want to do a film or do a play, I've got to get a lot of people together and a lot of money. But with painting, I can, with a piece of cloth and a few colours, I can put myself in contact with the spectator absolutely directly uh, and I can speak to him in a language which is above all uh, all words which is a language of, of colour a language of form uh, and that seems to me a, a contact so simple so so easy and, and and absolutely marvellous. There's no director, there's no producer to get in the way. It's me and the spectator. It, it's the ultimate. 